Hey everybody, this is MoBaller12 here to help quench that knowledge thirst. For this video, I'll be discussing acid derivatives. I'll be starting off this series of videos with the carboxylic acid, which is the the king, so to speak, of all acid derivatives. Okay, that's where we start off with. Um, before I get into it, I want to talk a little bit uh, about the update I gave you guys. Definitely check out my Facebook fan page. The link is in the description box below. Um, again, it's www. Uh, facebook.com forward slash mobile 12 check that out show your love and support for your boy um, let's see anything else oh yeah in regards to the new series I'm really deciding to go ahead and and go with that new series that I plan I talked about in my update I'm planning to commit to it so give me some suggestions give me some ideas as for as far as the name goes of the series um, also start posting your questions feel free to ask questions and then I'll, I'll eventually compile three questions at random and make a response video um, anything else let's see um, oh in regards to these videos I'll be once I finish acid derivatives I'll be moving on to um, let's see what is the alpha alkylation alpha halogenation I'll be talking eventually about car decarboxylation aldol reactions Michael reaction Clayson reaction and I'll conclude the second semester organic chemistry topics. Eventually, I'll revert back to first semester organic chemistry topics, um, but that'll be once I finish the second semester. Um, anything else? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Again, link in the description box to my fan page. Show your love. Like that fan page. And uh, comment. Make some comments. Uh, feel free to make any types of comments you want, how much you love me, so on and so forth. Just messing. Okay. So um, let's get into it. Okay, so for this video again, we're talking about carboxylic acids, acid derivatives. Okay, six reactions you need to know. These are the more popular ones you're expected to see in your chemistry classes, your OCHEM classes. Um, there's there's definitely more, but these are the main ones that you'll see. So let's get right right into it. Okay, uh, again, just a heads up. I put R groups here for every single carboxylic acid to represent a more generic carbon group. You should be comfortable with that uh, notation because I've done it on, in a lot of videos. Um, I don't want to specifically put a methyl group or ethyl group or any type of carbon group because it might get people confused. That's why I put a generic R group to represent a broader class of molecules of carbon groups, okay? So, let me catch my breath, okay. Uh, let's get right into it. So the first reaction here we have is a carboxylic acid uh, with something that looks like SOCl2 okay SOCl2 is known as thionyl chloride okay SOCl2 for this reaction let's make it nice and easy all you have to do when you see this uh, when you see a carboxylic acid with this reagent which is known as thionyl chloride replace the OH with a chlorine nice and simple R there's your carboxylic acid chlorine there you have it let me zoom in on the top portion of the video. Hold on one second of the board. Let me zoom in so we get. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, there you go. So there you have it. So carboxylic acid with thionyl chloride, you get this acid halide, acid chloride. Okay, I'll write down the side acid. Okay, let's put this up higher a little bit so my writing doesn't block other things. Acid. Chloride. Okay. Again, all you have to do is replace the OH with the chlorine. You get your product. Okay. I could go through the reaction mechanism, but it's going to take a lot of time, and I I rather not go through all of the reaction mechanism. But they all have a very similar trend. Um. The next reaction. Okay. Again, before I go to the next reaction, all of these reactions are basically interconverting between one acid and its derivative and just constantly interconverting between acid derivatives okay so you will eventually see um, that we're gonna go from acid chlorides to other things to carboxylic acids and it's constantly interconverting between one and another okay so it's kinda simple in that regard but it's definitely a lot of things you need to internalize and memorize okay the next reaction is two carboxylic acids uh, under the presence of high heat you know this little triangle represents heat, it also represents change, known as delta change. Um, but 
it also represents heat so under high heat conditions um, two carboxylic acids will form an anhydride okay an anhydride before I draw the structure is basically a oxygen group wedged between two carbonyl groups so for example an anhydride will take the form of this right here so there's your oxygen wedged between two carbonyl groups and here's your R R okay and I'll show you how to draw that from your starting material okay so that's the typical anhydride that's how it looks now for this specific reaction how, how could we draw it without getting confused what I like to do is draw both carboxylic acids okay let's draw both of them out instead of drawing the second carboxylic acid the same way I did here let's have the OH group facing this carboxylic this OH group they're facing each other these two OH groups so effectively it looks like that now you can already you guys could probably already see that this is already starting to take the shape of the anhydride I showed you I showed you guys earlier now all you have to do to draw the product is erase one of the OH's from one of the carboxylic acids it doesn't matter which one but just erase one of them and erase one of the H's from the other whichever one you whichever OH you erase erase the H from the other one okay you're left off like that and you can already see the anhydride I drew previously all you have to do is connect the links okay so bam that's it but obviously this looks funky you want to clean it up a little bit um, so what I would do is I'll erase erase this and draw it a little more neat and there you have it there's your anhydride I'll put that right here and let's see if my my spelling is on point today anhydride okay bear with me okay there anhydride so that's the second reaction okay so again um, you could use my method of drawing the two carboxylic acids with the OH groups pointing each other and erase one of the OHs, erase the other H from the other carboxylic acid, connect the links. Okay? Connect the two together. Um, the third reaction is a carboxylic acid under basic conditions. So you have sodium hydroxide and you have this thing known as uh, this thing RX. Okay? Um, this is an alkyl halide. And I'll go into showing what an alkyl halide looks like. Um, but I want to make I want to turn your guys attention to this little mark I have here okay the little mark is just to show that this R group which is going to be a carbon group does not have to be the same as this R group some people get confused because if I were to draw this R like this people would think like oh does this R group have to be the same as this R group for the reaction to work no not necessarily it could be something completely different but it has to fit this specific requirement but nonetheless this carbon group doesn't have to be the same as this carbon group here and that's the perfect segue into the into what an alkyl halide will look like an alkyl halide is exactly what the name states it's an alkyl group with a halogen attached to it now for example let's go through the um, different types of alkyl halides you should expect to see um, these are examples these are not all one one alkyl halide um, so for example here is um, one type of alkyl halide here's another type of alkyl halide and here's another type of alkyl halide let me just show you all three so you guys know okay. here's a primary here's a secondary here's a tertiary okay how do I know it's a primary secondary tertiary primary because the carbon that's directly attached to the halogen has only one carbon group attached to it okay so the carbon let's put a, a little star there as the import you know to locate the important carbon that carbon directly attached to the halogen has only one carbon group attached to it making it a primary the carbon group directly attached to the bromine here has two carbon groups attached to it so therefore it makes it secondary the carbon group here the carbon here attached to the bromine has three carbon groups surrounding it making it tertiary that's how you could define primary secondary tertiary alkyl halides okay nice little review of that I did talk about that in one of my videos but nonetheless I think a review was necessary uh, so here we have the requirement stating that the alkyl halide has to be a primary alkyl halide can be a secondary like I showed you over there or tertiary like I showed you over there as well 
it has to be a primary alkyl halide in order for this reaction to work because if it's not a primary it's very possible that it won't follow the reaction mechanism um, that it's supposed to follow okay it's possible instead of following an SN2 style mechanism it might follow an E2 mechanism or something to that effect okay completely completely different so it has to be a primary alkyl halide so in this reaction what happens is I'll just give you a brief overview I won't go into the details of drawing it out but I'll tell you what happens the sodium hydroxide which is a base strips, uh, strips off that acidic hydrogen and you shift the bond between these two atoms onto the oxygen that effectively makes this oxygen negative okay, it has three lone pairs on it now this negatively charged oxygen will attack this R group in an SN2 style fashion and kick off that X group and you form your ester so all you have to do in order to draw the product is erase the H and replace it with a R with a carbon group which is from your primary alkyl halide so it looks something like this okay so this R group this carbon group does not have to be the same as this it could be different hence the little prime the little mark I put there okay so here's your ester um, yeah so that's the third reaction I think it's pretty straightforward again erase the H replace it with the uh, carbon group of the alkyl halide making sure that it's a primary alkyl halide um, let me shift this a little bit to the bottom half of the board okay there we have it Reaction number four, here we have a carboxylic acid with an alcohol under acidic conditions. It's an equilibrium, but more favored to the product side. That's why you have a bigger arrow on top, smaller arrow on bottom. Okay? This alcohol, um, this alcohol uh, reacting with this carboxylic acid under acid acidic conditions will result in another ester. Okay? This alcohol again the R group here does not have to be the same as that R group there it could be different um, it could also be a primary secondary or tertiary alcohol it doesn't have to be uh, a primary alcohol like this guy up here was a primary alkyl halide it doesn't have any restrictions like that this could be primary secondary tertiary and again you can determine whether it's primary secondary or tertiary by using the same method I showed you above when I was just explaining primary secondary tertiary alkyl halides so in this case, you have a carboxylic acid with an alcohol under acidic condition known as the Fischer esterification. All you do is replace this OH with the with this group here. I'll put a little brackets around it. Okay, the OR group, OR prime group. Okay, so effectively your product will look like this. and you form another ester so there's two ways to form an ester make sure you're comfortable with both ways okay and that's the uh, fourth reaction again all you do is replace the OH group from the carboxylic acid starting material with the OR group you have up there the fifth reaction here we have a carboxylic acid with an amine okay amine are typically nitrogen uh, containing compounds uh, molecules and DCC, the name DCC, what it stands for is it's crazy. It's like N N di something something something. I mean, it's hard for me to say it. Um, but nonetheless, you need this specific reagent in order in order for the, for you to do this reaction. All you have to do is replace the OH with this group here. Okay, replace the OH with that group there. Let's draw that, and I'll talk about the R prime and R double prime what those are supposed to mean and here you have an amide that's the next uh, acid derivative we just formed a new uh, carbonyl function group we just formed okay um, so R prime and R double prime what does that mean R prime again is just to show a difference between the R um, this R and R, they don't have to be the same. Same thing applies for this, uh, for this R double prime. But it also means that these R primes can both be a carbon group, okay? They can both be a carbon group or a hydrogen, okay? So let me make a note of that. That, let me make a note right here 
that R prime and R double prime can be can be an H or okay can be an H or an alkyl group. That's extremely important to realize, okay? Or they can be also an aerial group, but I don't have that much space to write that. Um, but they could be an H or an alkyl group. So effectively, you could have two hydrogens there, or you could have two carbon groups there, or you could have one H and another in a carbon group there. Okay? So it doesn't have to be carbon groups in this specific case. In the other cases, for the reactions above, they have to be carbon groups. But this case, for this reaction specifically, R prime and R double prime can be an H or alkyl group. Okay? And all you have to do to draw the product for this reaction is replace the OH with this thing I have in brackets. And that's what we have there, the amide. The final reaction, nice and simple, should be nice and easy, is a carboxylic acid with borane. Okay, BH3 stands for borane, one equivalent of it. All you do to draw the product is erase the double bonded O. It's a reduction, effectively. You're reducing it. Anytime you're getting rid of... Um, a carbonyl is a form of reduction. You're reducing it. And that's it. That's the product that you form. Again, all you have to do is erase the double bonded O. You go from a carboxylic acid to a alcohol. And that's it. Now, stay tuned for the second part. I know it's a little bit long-winded, but I really wanted you guys to understand this. Um, but stay tuned for the second part where I go through a bunch of examples um, using these reactions that I've showed you guys. Okay, and hopefully I, make, I plan on making that video no longer than seven minutes, but we'll see, okay? So stay tuned for the second part.